Good morning, scholars. Let the peace of nature flow in your life on World Environment Day. I wish you a happy World Environment Day. Thank you. <laughs> Our topic for today is water pollution. Contamination of water by harmful substances which affects life on earth is termed as water pollution. Due to human activities, our water is getting more and more polluted day by day. Household garbage is disposed into various sources of water. Many people perform their domestic activities like bathing, washing clothes and utensils etc. in these sources of water. Also, Industrial wastes are discharged into the water, leading to water pollution. Hmm. Consumption of this polluted water leads to diseases like cholera, typhoid, diarrhea, etc. in human beings. Polluted water also adversely affects the aquatic life. Thus, we need to make sure that we do not pollute water. Domestic activities like bathing, washing clothes and utensils should not be done in rivers, lakes, ponds, etc. Household garbage should not be disposed in the various sources of water. Also, sewage and industrial wastewater should be treated before discharging into the water. Sleepover tonight, Peter. I love sleepovers. Uh, Chris, you should always shut off the water when you're not using it. But how will I brush my teeth without water? All you need is just enough to get your toothbrush wet. Like this. Why do I need to do that? There's water everywhere. In oceans, and lakes, and streams, and even when it rains. Well... You're right, but not all that water is safe for us to drink. Here, imagine this. If you took all the water in the entire world and put it in one big pool, it would look like this. See? I told you that's a lot of water. It might look like a lot, but of all that water, only a tiny bit is safe for us to drink and use every day. Oh. That's not very much at all. No, it's not. That's why we have to be smart about how we use it. Wow, you're right, Peter. I didn't think of that. 
It's always smart to save water. Where else can we save water? Well, we can save water by taking a short shower instead of a bath. And by sweeping up dirt outside instead of using a hose. And I always tell my dad when I find a faucet that's dripping so he can fix it. Dripping faucets waste a lot of water. Oh, I know. Like using a bucket to wash your dad's car instead of using a hose. That's right. And when I help my mom do laundry, we can make sure to always wash full loads instead of washing just a few things at a time. Those are great ideas, Chris. Wow. I had no idea there were so many ways to save water. You know, Peter, all this talk about water reminds me of a funny joke. What did the ocean say to the shore? I don't know. Nothing. It just waved. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, Chris. Humans create 5 billion tons of garbage every year. Dumping it all into landfills is terrible for our environment. What's a better way to deal with our trash? Reduce, reuse, and recycle. You probably already help by recycling at home and at school. In fact, 70% of our trash can be recycled. But what happens to all those materials that go in the bins after they get picked up? 
I'm here at E.J. Harrison & Sons Gold Coast Recycling in Ventura, California. It's at places like these that your recyclables, like glass, plastic, paper, and metal, are sent every day. Let's take a look at the life cycle of your reusable trash. Let it go, Mario! Tons of garbage each day goes up these conveyor belts where man and machine work together to separate everything into their appropriate categories. First to be separated is cardboard, a material that's easy to reuse again once it's cleaned up. Next comes paper. Newspaper, printer paper, and junk mail, which gets compiled here. Plastics of all kinds get separated for later recycling, and glass is moved in this direction. This is my favorite part. You know how two magnets that are similarly polarized will push away from each other, right? Well, this machine uses that same principle. Any metal that comes down the line, like an aluminum can, will be literally propelled into its own chute when it passes through the magnets. Watch. <laughs> cool, huh? Thousands of pounds of cardboard are now in these cubes, all neatly separated and stacked, ready for the next step. Here at the new Indy Paper Mill in Ontario, California, 1,200 tons of used cardboard gets turned into brand new paper. It starts when the bales are dumped into giant pulpers, vats of hot water that mash everything up into a thick stew. It's here that any non-paper is removed, such as wrapping wire and plastics. Filters remove finer pieces of debris, including the printed inks, leaving as the end result, pure liquid paper soup. Gigantic pressers then begin the process of squishing together the pulp, which not only starts to form the new sheets, but also squeezes out much of the water, until finally the sheets go through 55 dryers, heated to 280 degrees, and it takes only a few seconds to remove the last remaining bits of moisture from the newly formed paper, which is then rolled into giant spools. Those rolls then get cut into the size of paper New Indies customers have asked for. The cut rolls are taped and banded closed, stored on top of each other, and the process is finally complete. And what about all that plastic that makes up so much of our waste? Well, most of it is not wasted at all. Companies like Talco Plastics in Long Beach, California, separate the bales of plastic on these conveyor belts. An electric eye looks for the exact kind of plastic being recycled today and blows what it needs up these tubes faster than any human could. Next comes the grinder, which chunks everything into tiny parts. Those fragments still have some paper labels on them, so this louvered machine and its blowers automatically strip it all away, leaving just the plastic that gets washed and rinsed in these vats of hot water. Look at the difference between the clean and dirty plastic. Notice that the plastic is still all the colors of the rainbow? At the next stage, it all gets superheated and melted together. Just like when you mix all your markers or crayon colors, you get gray. The same thing happens here. The now gray plastic gets formed into pellets which are boxed up and sent on their way to be formed into some newly made plastic object. The whole process took only an hour but saved so much of our planet's precious resources. 
reduce, reuse, and recycle. It's a process that we are all responsible for. What started out like this has been refashioned into something like this. Brand new, ready to use, and recycle again. But you don't have to take my word for it. See you next time.